Christ, I swear to God. My brain just won't stop taking away on this fucking song. Get, uh, get on with it. Fucking get on with it. I, I am. I am swinging from a seven story window. Throwing parties in a 10 by 7 cell. It's a stunning the legs I'll go. To convince the whole damn world I don't need anybody's help. Yeah, I am waving while I drive. Don't bother swimming out to save me. I will only drag you down. I'll try to use your body as a life raft. Cause if there's room enough for one, there must be room enough for two. I'll sail and get ship you into the sunset. Sipping on the savory water till my liver turns blue. Shabana, It's a standard, the lengths I'll go To convince the whole damn world I don't need anybody's help Fuck Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to the Vanguard for Spike Jungle Fever Cohen. I am Matt Ray, and together we are traversing the muddied waters of freedom. I'm going with a Spike Lee theme. If you, I mean, that is accurate. So I can't. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't get. You know, I can't dispute that. No, I mean, that's, that, yeah. that's accurate. I, a while ago, I was just like, I'm going to go with a Spike Lee theme for him for. I don't know the unforeseeable future. For a couple uh, months, anyway. Right, because yeah, I got tons of tons tons of stuff to work with. Um, so, hey everybody, hi, how you doing, Spike? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Excellent. I am all thrown off today. Nothing is working right. Steven is fucking up every, everything so much that I cursed right out the gate. Um, but first, and we foremost, pay Steven good money. We pay Steven so well. That those good Russian rubles are going to Steven. <laughs> Steven is getting paid top rubles. Top and, rubles uh, for Steven, and nothing is working today. Uh, well, not so much first and foremost, but second and backmost. Uh, thank you to Low Tide Kava Bar for the kava that I'm going to be drinking on this episode. And thank you to Kroger for my purified water that they sold me. Bulavanaka. Bulavanaka. Uh, so, um, yeah, it was, um, I didn't do a show last week and then we didn't do a regular show this week. So now we're doing this. Um, this is good. This, this is, is good, good stuff. Yeah, the, I'm the, looking at this as I am a guest on the writer's block. And I am looking at this as, um, the writer's block is commandeering, uh, the flagship show for a week. I'm fine with all of those different scenarios. Yeah. Those are all good things. I'm yeah. good with that. It's really weird because I'm using a different camera today because the one camera is like messing up and I'm like looking at it and I'm like, oh, wait, no, that's the wrong camera. I need to go back to the other camera, the actual camera. You know what? You don't look bad, though. You actually look pretty good. No, thank you. No. I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with how you look. Well, I appreciate that. I'm usually good with how I look. Yeah, well, yeah. good. Well, yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> have you seen the show Preacher by any chance? Just random off the top. I've heard of it, but I haven't actually watched it. No. Oh, okay. I just start like so. Season one was fantastic. Season two, I never actually finished, but that's a different story. Uh, and I just finished it to well before today. I hadn't finished it, and because I want to see season three, and I'd finished it today. God, that show is dark and twisted and awesome and weird. And it's a it's about a preacher. It's about a preacher in a small southern. I think it's Texas. I mean, he's in Texas, uh, a small Texas preacher who took over his father's church and um, he uh, gets possessed, I guess, by this oh, okay. half angel, half demon. And they uh, give him like, you know, the power of God and but from demons. Well, he, it, so the the spirit that possessed him was created by an angel and a demon. So it's half spirit, it's half angel, half demon. Oh. So it's like the it, it's like the power of both worlds are now inside of him. So like if he's like dance, and he says it in this really deep, gravely voice, you're gonna dance. It's cool. so this is the Ted Cruz story. <laughs> It is the it is the Ted Cruz story, Ted. the the old or, or I guess the Ralph Raphael Cruz, right? <laughs> God, who, was that the Washington Post that did that uh, article? It was like Raphael Ted Cruz accuses uh, Robert Beto. <laughs> Robert... Oh yeah, cr- accuses uh, Beto uh, oh, or work of changing his name for political reasons. Yeah. I thought that was that was well done. That was so well done because it was an accurate headline. Yeah, that. Yeah. Um, kind of made yeah fun of the entire day. it was it was good it was good and um it was kind of the opposite because a guy named Raphael is calling himself Ted for whatever reason for whatever and a reason Irish guy is calling himself Beto so they is it, sort of I think it's Beto actually Beto Beto yeah so if it were Ted O'Rourke versus Beto Cruz that would actually be more not weird yeah. But here we are. It, it, yes. Um, I am now getting a delay on you. God, nothing is working today. You're getting a delay like in my dubbing? Yeah. Why check it out on uh check it out on the old video. Um hold on. I have to no. unmute. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Well yeah, accuses uh Beto uh changing his name. Yeah, uh so like oh, I said, man, that's yeah. not good. Hold, hold on, let me. That's really weird because it was it was fine when we were streaming beforehand. It was the moment that I went live that it changed. Here, I can offset it on my side a okay. little bit. Cool. That'll help. Excellent. Um, All right, good. Okay. Oh, that's better. Um, yeah. So we. Uh, so yeah, I was watching that today, and I was like, "Man, I really like the show." Why did I stop? And then I remembered the reason why I stopped, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's right," because I was in a dark place, and I just didn't really care about anything. Um, right. And Wait, it's, and this doesn't sound like the show you'd want to watch in man, that kind of mindset. You know, whatever. Uh, it's TV; it's not real. Um, but yeah, no, I was watching it again today. Loved it. Fucking loved it. Uh, I had a lot of time to watch a lot of TV this week, as you know. No, I do know. So have you started on the Lizzie Bennett Diaries? I have not started on the Lizzie Bennett Diaries, oddly enough. Um, Not not knocking it. Not going to knock the old Lizzie Bennett Diaries there, but it's just not really my cup of tea. That's what I I said when my wife mentioned that. I said, I I don't know if... uh... If that's uh, if that's what Matt would want to do, yeah. but I I you know I'm I'm only an interlocutor right uh, between my wife and the and the world at large. So when she brought it up, I said, Hey, look, I'll tell the man Lizzie Bennet Diaries. He'll do what he does. With right. It. I like that your wife uh, <laughs> recommended to me to um, send a handwritten thank you note to my hot doctor. Oh yeah, that's mm-hmm. uh, that would be my how my wife would. Uh, yeah. I didn't know she said. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She was like, well, oh, that's the card she was talking about." Yeah, that's the card she was thinking of, oh, and not, okay, and not okay. the business card like, that I was working on. No, uh, to be a greeting card, and I'm like, "What greeting card?" Okay, so to your hot doctor. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> so I, I did that today. I actually, I did that. I wrote a uh, thank you card for anybody who doesn't know I was in the hospital, like for the last, it's the reason we didn't have shows for, I didn't have shows for the last week. Um, no. But uh, we, uh, I, my, my doctor was insanely hot, like so incredibly hot. And I was like, wow, she, uh, I was like, man, she's, um, really attractive and I don't look my best right now. Cause yeah, my <laughs> so, uh, 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 Mr. Wright, what's wrong? Oh, nothing at all, doc. I'm in perfect health. I best health can't wait of to my get life. Out of here. What are you doing tomorrow? What are, you, what are you up to later? And she's okay. like, sir, you obviously can't see. And I'm like, no, right. I'm fine. Um, but, I could see you. I, can tell you that. I, I I definitely I got these these eyes. They they got you, um, and so <laughs> I, so I wrote thank you notes. I wrote a thank you note to her, and I thought that was just a little weird. So I also wrote one to the entire nursing staff. <laughs> so I, I I gave two, because you know I just want to make sure that everybody feels as though I appreciate the care that they gave me while I was in there. <laughs> and not just her. And not just her, not just her. Hers was slightly more personal though. I did not tell any of them I had a podcast, so I didn't want to, so they wouldn't tune in because I knew I was going to say <laughs> stuff like, okay. that's what I was going to say. <laughs> right, did you give you the address? Like, we're going to give you a special shout out yeah, on the show. No, I did. I definitely did not do that. I definitely considered it, but I, uh, I definitely held out on that one. I think you made a wise choice there. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I looked her up on Facebook because you know. I wanted to send her a thank you note. And so I sent just a Facebook message. And that was your wife was like, no, send her a handwritten letter. I was like, but I already sent the message. She, yeah, she won't no, she's right. It. And she uh, was right. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I found her on like, because, you know, all of her paperwork, there's her name. And I just went, here's your, you know, thanks for doing what you do. Uh, thank you for making it so I can see. Because uh, <laughs> I get to see you better. Because I get to see you uh ladies um but yeah so yeah if anybody wanted to know why there was no writer's block last week or why we had to postpone the muddied waters this week it's because i was in the hospital trying to make sure that i could see which is important it is it is especially for all that steven doesn't do here <laughs> <laughs> if steven would do his damn job it didn't matter what we could see i know i'd, I'd be fine like steven could read me the news and i'd be like okay got it you know, the funny thing about Steven is that he has such a place in our hearts that it really doesn't matter what he does, that we still keep him. Right. I mean, he he screws up time after time after time after time, and I'm still like, well, okay. He's Steven, I, you know. I can't get rid of you, lovable. Steven. You're, you're that lovable little scamp. You're the lovable little scamp of the muddied waters of freedom. Lovable little scamp. <laughs> uh so, uh, to keep uh, in theme of the last few shows, it is really weird looking at this camera because I'm so trained to look at the other one. Um, <laughs> well, and I've got my, uh, I've got my computer over here, so I keep looking over and I'm like, "Stop doing that," because you look like you're distracted. <laughs> so I keep looking at the camera, like, "Hey, everybody, I'm focused on you." I know. I'm like turning my entire body, but my head still wants to go. That's the camera. Um, right, right, right. <laughs> but. Uh, so to keep with the theme of the last uh, few episodes of the Muddy Waters of Freedom, private property rights, because, you know, are there any other rights that are more important? Uh, and no, I don't think so. No, then private property. I, I mean, all rights have essentially boil down to private property rights. Right, so. exactly. So and, no. In Michigan, there were two brothers, two brothers, Gary and Matt Percy. Gary and Matt Percy, uh, they had a large plot of land. I'm not right. really sure the size of the plot, but it had to be large <laughs> because they removed more than 1,400 trees from their property, which they have every right to do. It's their property. Well, and it's even not just that. It is their right, but wasn't there, isn't there an exemption in that law that if you're a farm, then you are exempt? And they were doing it for tree farming purposes. They were doing it for tree farming pr purposes. And yeah, there is a law in there. Like, so they were, they were changing it from whatever their farm was to a Christmas tree farm. So they had to get rid of all of the trees and then they got the fines. Oh, because they weren't a farm yet, probably. Right. Because they weren't a farm yet, but they were converting it to a Christmas tree farm. But they were harvesting trees. Right. They just had two, or sorry, it's, 
the two own a 16 acre property um in can canton township uh for anybody in the michigan area uh in canton township these two brothers had 16 acres they cut down 1400 trees and they got fined per tree um four hundred and fifty dollars so they got fined like seven and wasn't it like 700 grand or something like that it, it was like 700 grand starting out they ended up with um they ended up talking it down uh it was oh, i thought they were appealing it well yeah they the settlement offer from the township is roughly oh, okay. four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for okay. them to cut down trees on the property they own on their own property on their own property and these weren't not that it would matter but these weren't like endangered trees or anything like they didn't cut down a rainforest they they had a 1400 trees sounds like a lot but it's, right. they cut down the, they clear cut a 16 acre, acre property to use as a farm what tree farm that's the other thing they cut it down to grow trees right so it's not even like and again not that this would matter they weren't cutting it down to build a uh mini mart or a uh strip club 16 acre strip club but i'm not sure that was the next thing to pop up after mini mart but uh although if uh, they were to build a 16 acre strip club the strip stravaganza yeah um i i know many they did people it that to grow that. other trees yeah they did it to grow trees. They did it. So, okay, we had, we, the first week that we talked about this, we uh, had somebody, this one, in, in, in all it actually, like the first, the first week that we talked about this, uh, this was probably the, uh, the case where um, the guy probably wasn't in as much of the right as everybody else, but he, he tripwired his entire house. Yes. <laughs> when, when they, yes. they released him from prison to get his stuff and he tripwired his entire like he booby trapped his they house re they released him from prison which he was in for engaging in a shootout with the police right demonstrating that they could trust him oh yeah um, to do what's right for him in law enforcement <laughs> uh, obviously he he is the beacon of, of trustworthiness when you when you look up recognizance <laughs> in the uh in the old webster's dictionary you see a picture of him putting trip wires and making a shotgun uh wheelchair booby trapped wheelchair, wheelchair. <laughs> that <laughs> capped some poor fbi agent walking in this yeah. property i but my favorite part of that story and i know we want to talk about this other thing but my favorite part of that story was that the only smart person in that entire thing was the real estate agent <laughs> who, who who was smart enough not to go in? Who <laughs> realized who he, he? You know, he's hearing. Guy was in, you know, shootout with the cops. He's in prison for that. Yep. They let him out after, uh, and there was something related to elder abuse, right? Yeah, he um, he beat his mom or something. So he lost the house. It's been a couple of weeks, uh, but yeah, he lost the house. Because his mom, he had lost a, it's like a $2.5 million lawsuit for elder abuse to his mother. To his mother. To his mother. I don't know what he did to her. I don't know if it was psychological. I don't know if he was starving right, 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 right. I don't know what it was. Maybe just neglected her or whatever. Right. But um, maybe she was in the car during the shootout. Yeah. Um, but all that to say the agent heard all these things, showed up at the property. I think there was, I think you said there was like a sign saying, you know, uh, inter, it was like enter at your own risks, property right. booby trapped, something and like that. And he goes, yeah. I'm not going in there. Yeah. And I'm sure his broker in charge wasn't happy at first, but um, then the FBI says, it's okay. We're going to go check it out. And clearly they did a great job of bomb uh, uh, sweeping the place because <laughs> Home Alone style, they walked into the front door and got the Bow. old, got the old got shotgun the old, bullet to the leg. Got the old shotgun wheelchair, that old yarn <laughs> that that, um, that we've all heard of. Yeah, that that crazy, that crazy, <laughs> crazy <laughs> man. And then, uh, so the week, the week, like that guy, I, I, as much as I believe in private property rights, I would see why that one's kind of like mm, that's not really your house anymore. Yeah, that that he really stretched. And For, again, I'm not. Do I want to say that? Hmm. <laughs> I, uh, 
I like it when you have to think about it. At least you think about it before the words come out it. of your mouth, as opposed to me, and I just spit them out, and then I'm going, yeah, huh, see, I'm a lot, I, I uh, I'm a lot uh, crazier than you. And so the things that I say, the things that you say might have you get unfriended. The right. things I say could result in people kicking down my door. That's and true. So, um, so I don't. Here's what I'm going to say. I don't agree with what he did with the police. Um, because also we beat his mom and, 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 and I think I said this last time we don't, maybe his mom's a jerk. I mean, ultimately if you end up becoming an adult who, you know, is actively trying to kill police officers or anyone really on a regular basis, there's a good chance. Maybe your mom wasn't, um, wasn't there for you. So I don't know all the details, but I will have to say, can't say the guy's my hero. Uh, a plus for the, the gigantic cojones to say, you're going to let me out of prison so I can go uh, get my house ready for the, uh, the old police to show up and, uh, and seize it. Um, that I, I will give him. That, that, that is... I mean, that, that is one of the most amazing things that I've ever heard, especially from Vice News. Um... <laughs> from Vice. And, and again, and a shout out to Vice News yeah, for that Vi- entertaining Vi- article. Vice News needs credit when, uh, when, when, when they deserve it. Vice News gets all the credit. Good uh, job, Vice News. Nice job, Vice News. Um, and then week two, it was about the, uh, the parents of the autistic child and they painted the, ho- like the touching oh, yeah. story of the, where they painted the house, uh, the fence, yeah. like, um, uh, the, the starry night by Van Gogh. And then yeah. they said, well, that it has to match the house. So them obviously liking to give the middle finger or squiggly line guy, uh, <laughs> to, uh, the government. Cause he's the middle finger. Get it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, that That's we, a good one. Yeah. That joke's better in Japanese. That joke is much better in Japanese. Um, but uh, they they like to give the middle finger to the government. So they uh, painted the house like Starry Night. So it matched the fence. Uh, and that was a pure feel good story. That was a great story. That was a great story. And this one, like the the. It's still, I think that the, I, I believe that it's still going on. It, 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 this, this lawsuit or this fines or whatever the, the arbitration on it is still happening right now. The, the, the article you sent me, they were still like okay. in yeah, court yeah. over. Yeah. 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 So to, to the best of my knowledge, that, that is still happening. Um, so if everybody should just, man, everybody call the Canton Township. And tell them this is crap. Like, yeah, don't call us. Don't call us. Call we should have put the number for Canton Township up on the thing. Oh, that, call Canton Township. They're closed right now. It's government. Um, <laughs> but we, um, but we, uh, we definitely. Uh, but yeah, this isn't like this is insane. They 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 have the sixteen acres, and it's like I'm going to cut down these trees to grow what I want, so I can farm what I want, and it's going to be something that people can come and buy, and then we'll plant more trees, and then. Nope. In an industrial park, that was the craziest thing. Like there was nothing about that article. Cause again, I'm an anarchist. I think people should, if they wanted to put a freaking, you know, opium farm there and, uh, you know, hire the local kids to, to farm it. I'm not, you know, did they get the parents consent? Like I, I, I'm not, I'm on a different level than most people on this stuff. Right. Yeah. That said, I've learned that I am on a, that most people aren't there. So when I read these things, I'm trying to look for, well, maybe it was because of this or that. It's on a, it's in an industrial park. So it's not next to, you know, it's not next to a, a residential neighborhood and they just lost their, you know, tree view, you know, and all of that stuff. It's in an industrial park and they're putting a freaking tree farm. They're cutting down trees, which are then going to be used for a useful purpose. Cause I can tell you right now, hard lumber is always used. Um, Soft lumber is too, is for that matter. I mean, lumber yeah. gets used. They don't just throw it in the trash. Um, and then they're going to put up other trees and farm them. So you're creating a sustainable business that creates a sustainable resource, which is wood, and which helps the environment because you're still, you know, whatever the greenhouse gas, like you still are, are making something that right. absorbs this- carbon uh Carbon dioxide, and uh, carbon dioxide, and, and turns it into oxygen. Right. So, what the hell is your problem, Canton Township? Right. What What is wrong with you, Canton? What Town- does that say about you, I know. Canton Township? I know. 
Just nothing good. <laughs> nothing good. Nothing good coming out of the old Canton Township this old week. Old Canton Township. The old Canton Township. I heard Stevens from Canton Township. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely makes sense. Steven, what are you from? Yeah, he is. Yeah, um, he's definitely, yeah, he's definitely Canton from Canton. Canton. But that traditional, that that old we, Canton Township brogue that yeah, they have down there. I know that the, those long A's or hard A's or whatever they call them. The long hard A's of Steven. Yeah, the long hard A's of Steven. Uh, Why keep them around? <laughs> I mean, really, it's it's charming. Um, <laughs> so, Michael Avenetti. Speaking of Michael Avenetti. Speaking of Michael Avenetti. Speaking of Stephen, Michael Avenetti. Um, Michael Avenetti. Definitely considering a uh, run for the old 2020 president. Looking forward, <laughs> looking forward to that, by the way. Uh, because there's just so much going on outside of what we're about to talk about, but uh, oh my gosh, he uh, he 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 did an interview with Time Magazine today. Well, it came out today, and um, came out at like eight thirty, and in it, he said, "It the nominee better the Democratic 2020 Democratic nominee better be a white male." Which is odd. I mean, he is. He happens to be. Happens to be a white male. He just happens to be a white male. Um, Who is expected to run for for the nomination. I mean, so is Biden and so is Bernie. And I think that's pretty much the list of white males. Yeah, I was going to say that's pretty much the extent of the white males that I know of that are are, uh, right for the old Democratic nomination. Right. Um, the, The article does say that he quickly kind of walked back and goes, I wish it wasn't that way, but, uh, you know, that's just the way it is right now. So it better be a white male because he's, a, apparently he allegedly, uh, one can only infer that he forgot the eight years prior to 2016 where there was not a white male in the oval office of a, of a black man, not just a black man, a black man with a name that would strike fear in the hearts of anybody in the fifties. Right. I mean, his the 1950s, name, not like people in their fifties, like the 1950s. I actually thought that his name was more of a direct, his name is Barack Hussein Obama. There's nothing wrong with that. Name. No, nothing wrong with it. I nothing mean... wrong with that name at all. Most people, <laughs> when they hear Hussein, they think of Saddam Hussein. Absolutely. Uh, some people that are a little more into the news think of Sheikh Hussein. Uh, and then Obama, again, now we know Obama. When we hear Obama, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just like Trump. I mean, you know, you, you hear the name, you know, everyone knows what right. it means. When I first heard Obama, the first thing I thought was Osama bin Laden. And, and not even in, not even like, oh, well, he must be a terrorist or what, but like just hearing the name, that was the first word association right. that I made. So here's a guy named o- Barack Hussein Obama, who was a black man. Right. Who won 10 years ago. Yeah. But America's not ready for a non white male nope, the Democrat- uh, Democratic nominee. The Democrats in 2020 better put forth. A white male. A white male. Coming white from people, one people. of the white males running for the Democratic nominee. I mean, not self interested at all. No, definitely, definitely not self interested at all. And I mean, he's oh, he, Fotini Henderson. Uh, right, I, I was actually Michael Avenatti. <laughs> Michael Avenatti uh, first came to fame as the attorney.
Julius Wetnick, Julius who Wetnick, alleged yeah. that uh, uh, that he would that Kavanaugh was running a rape gang rape party party, party we every weekend party line gang rape yeah thing. of like massive gang rape right. and it kind of derailed the slightly more the <laughs> considerably more plausible allegation that Christine Blasey Ford put forward saying that he uh, had a sex tried to assault her one time. Um, and she came out and then it turns out she like has a long history of fraud and, and lying and it just completely derailed everything. So, Hey, thanks, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. So um, that's who Michael Avenatti is. That is who... And, and he's just, uh, and, 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 and from that, he's decided that it, America needs him in the white house. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because he, rep... so he's, According to the article, he brags about the fact that he's gotten over a billion dollars in settlements won, um, which good for him. Uh, except it, the article did say there, he's using a lot of liberties with that because if you take away uh, what happens after um, appeal, it's much right. less. It is way way under the number. Um, so obviously, right right out the gate, he's a. Uh, well, and and isn't he like heavily, heavily in debt, and um, like always in bankruptcy, or he owes a bunch of money to contractors in the IRS? Like I he mean, the, sounded the, like a the total mess. Presi- of a... The current president uh, declared bankruptcy like nine times. Like Th- that's true, and I'm not a fan of Trump at all. Right. I, I need to defend one thing though. Uh, he did what's called, he actually uh, took advantage of our statist system, which allows you to create separate entities that by law cannot have collections levied against them, against the main entity. So I can have Spike Cohen Corporation A and Spike Cohen Corporation B and Spike Cohen Corporation C, and I am clearly the owner of all three of these corporations. And if I run up a bunch of debt in the name of Spike Cohen Corporation A, I can structure that in such a way that I pay little to nothing back on that. And my other two corporations and myself are fine. So right. Trump has a history of, you know, running up lost leaders and then bailing on them. So they don't have to pay on it. Is that unethical? I would say, I so. Would say so. It's perfectly legal. Yeah. That's, that's the one thing everybody, uh, recently with, um, the, the, the recent, uh, explosion of Facebook followers and likes and, shares and stuff that we've gotten right uh somebody was saying what about the why aren't you talking about the bombshell article of that the new york times put out about uh, the trump tax thing I, w- I would like to read that directly as it was but they deleted their comments um <laughs> which but, helps us to pursue it right which helps us to look into it. but uh and my answer to that was well technically he didn't do anything illegal by doing what they did. Like anybody that thought that Trump was a self-made man, uh, well, you're an idiot because you knew he wasn't a self-made no, man. No, no, and he's also again what he's good at is leveraging the 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 reins of power and and you know the 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 tools in place for people that are already moneyed to secure their and entrench their wealth and power yep. at the expense of everybody else. Yes. Um, so, you know, Trump is someone who would not be nearly as successful in a true free market economy, but we don't live in a true free market economy. So, no. aha. So yeah. next time you, next time you get mad about Trump being rich, despite himself, you know, maybe stop pushing for more regulation and, 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 uh, over government oversight because Trump is a child of that. Which right. is why Trump was a Democrat for forty years. Um, so yeah, so that's the that's the story with that. And the other thing is that even if he did broke the law, taxation is theft, and we're a libertarian show. Right. And it's, yeah, I'm not going to be often that you find us giving someone a hard time for not paying taxes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. What about all the tax? Blah blah blah. Good for him. We should all do it. Every one of us should figure out how to not pay taxes on money that is already ours. We should all be paying Donald Trump level in a percentage of our income on taxes. So. Right. Uh, not mad at him. No, can't be mad at him. Can't be mad for that. Not for that. No, not for that. For many other things, yes, but not for that. Um, no. So Clearly, the only thing that can stop him is a white male Democrat. <laughs> it's a white male Democrat. Yeah, uh, and obviously one that 
he really doesn't have a win against Trump yet, right? I don't know that he has a win. <laughs> well, I mean, he, he, well, I, mean I guess he's been successful in the past, right. but he has no win on the national stage. He has been pure lose. And not only has he lost, he's dragged others down too. Right. It is very possible in an alternate reality where the only allegation that came up against Kavanaugh was Christine Blasey Ford. And everything remained hyper-focused on that. It is very possible that that would have peeled away enough Republican support to, if not for them to vote him down, to just indefinitely hold him off until after the elections, which would have you know, been a, a, a cloud over the results. And, and who knows how that would have resulted. But, but it's very possible that that could have done it because hers was, again, she didn't have evidence either, but it was, it was a more believable and plausible thing. Right. And she definitely seemed affected enough that it could possibly be true. Enough so that, you know, again, this isn't a, a, a trial. It's more of a, you know, court of opinion. And enough people have said, hey, you know what, maybe it happened. And then here comes the Democrat white male and his, uh, his client who puts out a insane story the, that no one cooperated. The, the one that it, if, I had, if I had to rank them, like, because, okay, the Christine Blasey Ford one. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe. It may very well happen. Not. I'm not gonna say it did. Not gonna say it didn't. Um, I, I'm just gonna say that it, the story's out there. Uh, yeah. And everybody's gonna make their own decision upon that story anyway. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, she didn't present anything to make you think that it didn't happen. Right. So it may or may not have happened. Right. It may or may not have happened. Um, right. Somebody put. Uh, never. No, I'm not even gonna get into that one. Um, I was in an argument on Instagram with somebody, which that was fun. That was new <laughs> arguing on Instagram for me. That's yeah. How that, often does that happen? That was the first. Um, nice. But, uh, you know, libertarians are nationalists, but you know, whatever. Um, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, that guy's more, uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so that one, yeah, maybe the second one, um, Debbie Ramirez, that one, Sure. I'm not like, it's a little out there. The, the, the one thing in it is the thing that you and I always make fun of about, um, Hey everyone. Uh, hey, I just saw Brett Kavanaugh do something that is actionable by law enforcement against Deborah Ramirez. Right. And to, it is 1984, the current year, the current year. The but current year is nineteen. Could that have happened? You know I mean? Yeah, it could have. Could it have. could have happened? Could have. If you have That's, a friend, that, that, that one seemed less plausible than Ford's, though. Yes, it did. Yeah. And then Avenatti brings out Julie Swetnick, <laughs> old Julie Swetnick, who claimed that she was there when they were. She would. She. <laughs> Continue to continue go to, to, rape, go to parties. rape parties and was just like, oh, don't drink the punch or else you're going to get gang raped. And she was like, which, OK, which well, have, that's good knowledge, which would have made her complicit in gang if her rape. allegations are true. Right. In. I'm not sure what the crime would be, but if you are knowingly going to it's one thing to know that something's happening in the abstract and. Just say, oh, it's none of my business. I'm not going to get into that. If you are going consistently to parties where this is happening, right. you are now uh, somewhat of an accomplice there in that you're not telling anybody. Right. You're seeing why, people why would getting you victimized have, over and over again. Why would you have not have said anything to anybody about this ever? Well, and it's criminal. What you did was, criminal. <laughs> what you did was, was actually criminal and... and uh, uh, and when she was questioned on that by, I want to say it was like ABC or whatever, she started to really backtrack on her story. And then all of the stuff from her past came up uh, that, you know, she had uh, uh, said that she was, um, what was it? She was uh, away from a job, but also collecting, she was getting money from them for maternity, but also collecting unemployment right. or disability or something, something like, like that. that. Or she was collecting unemployment and disability. And then she's made multiple sexual assault allegations. And then one of her yeah, boyfriends she, came out and said, this woman's nuts. And she, like, she lost a, a lawsuit back in 2001 for uh, false sexual assault allegations in the workplace. Yeah. Um, so great job vetting there. Right. Uh, so this is the guy that's going to, that that is hoping to be the president. 
the the white By male Donald Trump. Right. The white male that is hoping to uh, be president. The great white Democrat hope. The great white Democrat hope, Michael Avenetti. Um, God. Who I don't, you know, when he first came out, I saw people on the left who were like, yeah, Avenatti is a real rock star or whatever. I haven't heard anyone say anything even the least bit remotely positive about Michael Avenatti. Avenetti. No. Since Julie Swetnick. <laughs> I thought you meant she said something positive about him. I haven't seen somebody say anything positive about him since Julie Swetnick did. Yeah, I, I, I very possibly the last person on <laughs> earth to say anything positive about Michael Avenetti besides himself was Julie Swetnick. Yeah, I mean, you've got <laughs> Time Magazine, Time Magazine publishing this article about him as though he is, and it, it wasn't the nicest of articles. I will, I will say that it was not the nicest of articles. Of all the publications to go to and say, hey, Democrats, hey, the left of 2018. Right. October of 2018, the resist left in one of your favorite publications. Hey, you know what you need? A white male. That is what will cure your ails here. Oh, man, I got. It. Oh, geez. What? I may make a prediction. Uh Oh. I'm betting he gets man of the year. Really? Because man of the year is the person, like, according, per, sorry, person of the year is 2018. Uh, person of the year is, is the person or group of people, group of persons who um, make the most headlines. I'm betting Avenatti gets person of the year. Because he did the, he did, he, he did the Stormy Daniels. Right. He probably did the Stormy Daniels, and then he did the Stormy Daniels, whichever way you want to, whichever way you want to read that. Um, and then he, he did Julie Swetnick, which I mean blew up in his face, but as did Story Dan- Stormy Daniels, as did Stormy Daniels. Uh, and then he starts talking about running for president. I bet, he, I man, I bet he's Person of the Year by time. That would be. I don't the think funniest. they give, I don't think they give it to Trump again. But I bet. I bet. God, I bet it's Avenatti. Which, if they follow their own rules, it is impossible not to give that title to Donald Trump until he dies, right. probably. Right. But then I remember, I and again, you know, iconoclast Spike, 2001, they made, uh, or 2002, whichever it was, they made Rudy Giuliani the person of the year. America's mayor. Yes. And they said, uh, because of his response to 9-11. Right. And I said, who has been talked about more on the news? Rudy Giuliani or Osama bin Laden? Yeah. I re- okay. So I re- we're, we're roughly the same age. I, I've got a, a couple of years. Close enough. Yeah. yeah. I, so, yeah, I remember, I remember that happening and... I remember there being like a very early, early on online petition to Time Magazine to not allow Osama bin Laden be man of the year. Oh, of course, because of the whole, you know, he just killed a bunch of Americans right, he just and all of 3, that. But keep, they made Hitler man of the year. They did, but that was before, that was, uh, wasn't that before Kristallnacht? Oh, was it? I think so. I think it was oh, so when he was, was during World War Two. No, I think, I, and don't quote me on this. I could be wrong, but I, I have to look that up. Yeah, I believe that when he was Man of the Year, he was. Uh, it was bef- It was while he was taking over Germany. If I'm correct, but the um, Ay- but the Ayatollah in the seventies got it when they were doing the Ayatollah stuff. For- right. So mm, right. it wasn't three thousand Americans. Hold on. So 1938 was when he was named. And Kristallnacht was... That's what I'm looking up. April of 39? Uh, 39. uh, November of 38. So probably the decision was made before Kristallnacht. Right. But, and he wasn't killing Americans or whatever. But obviously, they haven't always picked the good guy. It's always been... I mean, at that point, he was not the... You know, no one was disputing that he was a bad guy. Right. by, By, you know, 38. If it had been 33, eh, you could have people arguing right. that, wow, you know, he's a reformer. 
Um, but by 38, the guy was a dictator. I believe he was already making moves on Poland. Like, I mean, it, it, the Reichstag's fire had already started, had already happened, I believe. Like, the, the Holocaust was well underway. And, you know, um, I remember my dad, who's 81, telling me, even back then, people were talking about the concentration camps and rumors that there were, people were being rounded up and killed and right. the trains. And that was all the way in the States. Like, this whole, you know, oh, we had no idea. That's all garbage. Everyone knew. It was one of those, like, we're pretty sure this is happening, but, you know, is it worth going to war type of a thing? But they weren't, no one, everyone knew that was happening. So I will say this, I will fight something from 2001. Why the hell not? 1938, if Hitler is, is, is man of the year, then, then Bin Laden should have been man of the year. Oh, one. And Donald Trump should be man of the year. From here on out. From here <laughs> on out. Definitely this year. Definitely last year. Right. I can't imagine anyone usurping that role. Ever. No, and if you if you, oh man, they may give it to Christine Blasey Ford though. I actually think that's more likely to happen. Because last than year, Avenatti. last year they Just... gave it to the Me Too people. Yeah. Oh, well, didn't they already do that? That was last last year they gave it to the Me Too. People. Yeah. So well, there you go. Now they're giving it to the ultimate, the the peak, peak Me Too, Christine Blasey Ford. I right. could see that happen. I could see that one. And, and here's why I could see I, it. I could, I could see it. Everybody on the opposition of Kavanaugh, the Kavanaugh, right? The crowd. Kavanaugh crowd, or the like. They would just call it hashtag the resistance. Because that's who's gotten the headlines. I think, so, um, here's why I don't see it happening with Avenatti. He's an embarrassment to what they're trying to do. They try to mount an active and vibrant and robust resistance to something Trump's doing. And he shows up and he's like, Hey everyone, look at me. And it, he does the stupidest, you know, he presents stuff that any sober, any person looking at this from a nonpartisan point of view is like, this is a terrible idea. And why are you embracing him? So not to say that they won't, you know, Hey, you know what? Maybe they'll make that mistake again. I certainly will laugh and enjoy that. Yeah. Oh, no. You know, when do they decide who the person of the year is? Uh, it's, it's a weekly magazine. I think they decide like December 1st. Okay. So if the, if the uh, election results in, here's my prediction. If the election results in the Democrats getting either or both House majorities, right. either the Senate or House, then the person of the year will be the American voter who voted to put a check to the abuse of the Trump administration. Mm. That's actually a good, that's actually a good theory. It's what I'd do if I were a leftist that. Uh, a leftist no, that's good. That's a good theory. Because not only does it hit all the narratives, but it's also like really self-serving like, Hey, pick up, pick up a time magazine to read about yourself. You and, uh, Cause you're a person of the year <coughs> voting. So, and you know, the print print media is going out. So you need people to come out and buy that. That like, one. Please buy please actual buy this and frame it. Cause it's you. Cause it's you. You are on, they'll do the mirror cover. I was just going <laughs> to say, they'll, have the mirror <laughs> they'll do the mirror cover. So that way you can always be at the cover of time magazine. Please buy paper magazines. Oh. Um, yeah. That'll be the new, the new person of the year will be whoever buys this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's my prediction is that it'll be the voter. If they don't, if the Republicans retain the majorities in both house, they will pretend that the voter didn't even happen. There was no election. Right. It's, it's my prediction for time. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I could see Avenatti happening though, but only if they truly, truly, have not figured out yet why Donald Trump keeps winning. So that's possible too. Are they ever going to figure it out? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think they know. And it's one of those, like, you know, when you're involved in someone and they're like, you know, that person's bad for you. And you're like, yeah, I know, but they make me feel good or they, you know, I'm scared to leave them or whatever reason people don't leave a toxic uh, relationship. Right. I think that the left, um, and and, and, and I, there were there were some of this was Bush derangement syndrome, 
left over. Um, it's just Republican derangement syndrome in general, but with Trump, it's way worse. There was certainly Obama derangement syndrome, oh, yeah. of which I was quite a victim in 2012. I was heavily, heavily beguiled with Trump derang uh, Obama derangement syndrome. I was one of the people that thought that Mitt Romney definitely won that election, but that millions of illegal aliens... <laughs> Uh, 12 uh, million voting. illegal aliens came out to vote in that election. Millions of them. Yep. I remember hearing that. Came out to vote. I was that guy in in in, in all of your news feeds pushing that, I can't that wait, barb. Can't wait for those November memories to start coming up on Facebook. <laughs> You'll see them. Um, I like going back to my old stuff and typing LOL, oops. Because... Um, <laughs> I uh, I recently have been going through all of the polls that I used to share, showing that Romney won the the debate, or that you know, oh, uh, yeah. Paul Ryan won the debate. Yeah. And I look at it, and I'm like, what the hell were you doing? I, okay, but I remember those debates. Oh, he killed him. He in those killed debates. him in those debates. <laughs> that first debate, especially. Yeah. You know, by the third one, it was kind of one of like it kind of went back and forth, and it was truly where it was like it really depended on which one you supported, right. whether you thought who won like it was like well you know he made better points now you just agree with those points yeah, just... it really by the third one it was it, looking back it was kind of even that first one was yeah he crushed him in that first one that was the, the, insanity so that was the first year that was the first year i really started getting into libertarianism and i knew i was gary johnson i was voting gary johnson that year okay so i was looking at that debate from i don't care who wins I'm not. I'm not voting for either of these guys. Right. Um, right. Right. You know, I'm, I'm. I'm voting for that third party, or as you know, many people say, throwing that vote away. Which I throwing think your I'll, own vote away. Throwing my own vote away, which I think uh, all votes are thrown away. But um, <laughs> I, I, I feel increasingly like I'm rubbing off. I, on a you, little bit. I mean... Like I said that I went, man. That's a freaking spike line. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we um. <laughs> But so I was watching that debate and I remember the partisanship that I started seeing on Facebook at the time. And I'll never yeah. forget. I won't even mention his name. I don't think he watches the show or anything, but I still won't mention his name. He does have the name of a, for anybody who's watching, uh, who, uh, knows the person. And, uh, he does have the name of a former democratic president. Um, only the first and last, uh, but he, um, uh, all right, it's John Kennedy. So, oh, okay. okay. But uh, he posted Johnson, like okay. Sorry. Yeah, no, he posted. Um, what did he post? He said, uh, "My thoughts on the debate tonight: Barack Obama, uh, colon one, Mitt Romney, point five. And I was like, "Man, I don't care who wins this debate. I don't want either of these guys to be president." But that just isn't right. Like, that is just wrong. I remember Michael Moore lamenting how well Romney did in that first debate right. and saying that he actually started to sound like Reagan and that Obama's voice got more and more, like, uh, wilted or, you know, uh, you know, high-pitched and questioning, you know, like, where everything ends in a question. And, like, that it was like watching someone verbally beat someone else. Yeah. Michael Moore... I'm going to tell you, John Kennedy, not assassinated John Kennedy. <laughs> if Michael Moore has the intellectual honesty to admit that Mitt Romney flat blasted Barack Obama in that first debate, face fisted. Then, uh, what, what's that? Face fisted. He face fisted him. <laughs> he fisted him right in his face. Fisted him right in his face with his words. Face, face. The old uh, oral face fisting <laughs> the old, that he did. The, the oratory face fisting that Mitt Romney gave Barack Obama in 2012. He, he performed just he performed some oral he, face fisting on his old buddy Barack Obama. Uh, and just like that, my mother's definitely never watching this show. Um, he, he was definitely in that debate. Some would say he was a master. And. <laughs> um, I mean, it was too easy. I don't know. Um, he definitely won that. And again, I was a partisan. So when I watched it, I was, you can ask Tasha, I was losing my mind. I was like, ah, and I was like running around I'm like, yes, 
ah, it's, you know, that this is, we're going to take our country back. And, um, and, the, and by the second and third one, I was just, I, I was so sad. I'm like, no one could have watched that and not thought this was the hope for the future. And then, um, and then I remember there were some polls, some Rasmussen polls at towards the end that had uh, Mitt Romney ahead oh. by uh, like a point and a half. And I'm yeah. like, it's happening. It's happening. And on election night at first, for like the first couple hours of the results coming in, Romney was, was ahead in the electoral vote and about even in the, in the popular vote for whatever that's worth. And I'm like, it's happening. We're going to get rid of this. Whatever I thought Obama was this antichrist, hybrid atheist muslim who wants to impose both communism and sharia law in the same, at the yeah, same time yeah, at the same time with his his um uh uh, uh his uh, transsexual hidden man wife and their fake children that they adopted <laughs> from indonesia and uh i mean i was full bore in all that stuff um i would have had a very fun show back then so so, so speaking of uh, so speak, whatever the next thing we're going to talk about I actually have the greatest segue for this I don't freaking okay, believe, good. I don't believe it so speaking of Barack Obama's transsexual hidden man wife speaking of Obama packages right exactly <laughs> there's already a suspicious package in Michelle Obama's pants Somebody tweeted that and sent it to me and I thought it was so like I laughed while I don't believe that conspiracy, but I laughed so hard at that. I never actually believed that conspiracy. I just hated I mean you want to talk about Obama derangement syndrome. I hated Barack Obama so much that I said it repeatedly in the hopes that other people would think it was true. Right. So I know what Trump derangement syndrome feels like. Because I was that for Obama. for Obama and it wasn't, and it wasn't a, it, it certainly wasn't a racial thing or anything like that. It was just, I didn't like his policies. I had completely bought hook, line, hook, line and sinker, all of the right wing, you know, propaganda, um, to try to make it look like he was really any different than Bush was in terms of his policies, which he wasn't. Right. Um, and, uh, and so I just, I bought it full bore, but I never actually thought she was a man. No. Um, <laughs> But speaking of suspicious but, Obama packages. But speaking of suspicious Obama packages, uh, there's been a bunch of packages. I don't even know what the number's up to now. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it's, it up right now because I had a great yeah. article that actually like laid it out. And I think it is not here. Somebody. No. Somebody. We don't know who. Lots of theories to be discussed. Oh, um, yeah. Somebody is sending packages to high-ranking de Democratic officials and Robert De Niro. <laughs> that <laughs> that uh, possess cartoonishly made pipe bombs as though they were coming off of pick any television show about spies and terrorists ever. Right. Acme and, brand pipe right, bombs. Acme brand pipe bombs. Um, and <laughs> sending them. And I'm like, I don't know if they're being sent by courier or if they're being sent by UPS or USPS because they have stamps on them. The stamps aren't like stamped and I don't see the courier fucking friggin' barcode. I heard that they were mailed. I heard that they were stamped, but then sent by a, a courier. Right. And now the most recent thing that I was just reading this to you before we were, when we were about to go live was that, um, that they're now thinking that they came out of a mail sorting facility in just, what's it, what was it? Opa, oh, Opa Lee? My, my, we'll call it Miami. Yeah. Just North of Miami. Right. Um, in Opalaka. 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 Um, and so here are the people that the, 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 the victims so far, uh, Hillary Clinton, yep. or I guess Bill and Hillary Clinton, I guess it was right. addressed. It, it was the Clintons, the Clintons, um, Obama, yep. Barack Obama, uh, <laughs> as opposed to, as opposed um, to any of the others, former, former CIA director, John Brennan, courtesy of CNN. Yeah. Right. George Soros, George Soros. Right. Uh, Eric Holder, the former attorney general for Obama. Yep. 
Maxine Waters, the California representative who is known for saying she's reclaiming her time. And not only, not only that, but if you see them in a restaurant, create a scene. Oh yeah. 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 Go after them in the restaurant. Go after them. Yeah. She's, she's, but not like this. Not yet. Um, Don't do this. And not us. Right. Um, just, uh, them. go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, no, not us. Just them. <laughs> just go after them. Go after them. Uh, Robert De Niro, as you said. Right. Um, and, uh, Joe Bryden obviously former vice president and then um andrew cuomo andrew cuomo because <laughs> i was thinking it was 11 and i was just counting there and that's 10 um uh, andrew cuomo got a re- andrew- suspicious package in the mail and before anything happened before it was open before it was investigated he came out and he said somebody sent me a bomb and then the nypd tweeted out nope no, they didn't. No, they didn't. That's You're not right. what was in that suspicious package. I just that suspicious package held Michelle Obama's. Never mind. Um, <laughs> this was like you know, Andrew Cuomo was the Julie Swetnick of the of the, <laughs> of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> And she's saying, he's he's saying, me too. Me I got too. a bomb got too. And the NYPD of all people were like, I didn't, you're all right. And the, it makes, okay, so for, <laughs> for, for Andrew Cuomo to come out and say, I got a bomb. Okay. I'm not saying that th- this entire thing is fake. Yeah. Give me time. I'll get there. Um, but not saying that yet. Though. Not saying that yet. Um, but Andrew, like, I'm rooting for Larry Sharp in New York, obviously. Molinaro or whatever his name is. Probably going to make third is the way that I'm looking at it. Like, yeah, that's, that's looking like he might, you know, Larry could win if the people weren't throwing their vote away for this old Molinaro guy. Right. Um, so Molinaro could come in third. So, you know, it's between a libertarian and the Democrat. And the Democrat's going to, like, as much as I hate to say these words, the, the, the Democrat's going to win. Um, and By, like, a ridiculous... The, the fact that it's... Molinaro is not going to come in third because Larry Sharp's going to get 60% or 45% or whatever. It, 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 because, like, he's that low that the third party guy is going to do better. And I hate to say that because I, I, I actually like Larry. Larry's a minarchist. And, I like Larry a lot. Yeah, I like him a lot. Like... When I first saw him on the scene, I was really skeptical, and I'm like, "Oh, hey, look, I'm a black libertarian, and I speak well." Like, on- honestly, I was just like, you know, you know, what kind of panderer are you, basically? And and I'm not sure why I had that reaction, um, but th- that was just a reaction. I, I I get that reaction sometimes to people. I'm like, "Oh, you're just pandering." I would He's say it's because really you're a solid guy. I would say it's because you're racist, but yeah, that's definitely <laughs> it. When I see a black person, I'm like. Obviously, you're pandering. What are you up to? <laughs> no, it, it, no, it was truly like, because I, I mean, I've gotten that with all, I have lots of black friends, Matt. <laughs> How dare you? Um, uh, I, I, but I just, when, when he first, I don't know, what, I think I heard him give an interview and he just seemed kind of, I don't know, I'm not sure what it was. Definitely, it was, it was definitely. It's, I think that was when he was running for, um, was that when he was running? First time I think I saw him was when it was, trying to get the vice presidential nominee right see i see i didn't i didn't follow that i was so like i would the whole i was in orlando i wasn't there because eh, i already made my vote um but uh <laughs> i would i wasn't going to be in a, a delegate at that one so i didn't go right. i kind of thought about going just to check it out but uh and i was in orlando so why not but uh then i didn't because in orlando because a girl called me and I was like, man, that sounds a lot more important than finding that out is Gary way Johnson one. More likely to happen than anything <laughs> that comes from the libertarian. I mean, to be honest. I figured I got luckier than every libertarian that weekend. Um, <laughs> I got a better <laughs> shot at something developing from this. Right. Than from what happens at the. Than what happens at the, at the convention. The Wildathon. Right. That we, the well, the Wildathon. <laughs> oh God! That well, that Johnson. Well, that Johnson. Um, <laughs> so that was the first time that like I started hearing about this guy Larry Sharp, and then I started looking yes. into him, and I was like, "Man, this guy's this guy this guy's bright. I like him. 
I like yeah. him. Yeah. And I'm oddly enough, nobody, nobody sent him any packages. Bombs or not. Because <laughs> who, not. I mean, everyone, everyone loves him. Right. I, I will say, he's a guy that I like. At first, I'm like, something's up. This seems very pandery. I'm not, you know, kind of came to me anyway out of nowhere. And I'm like, well, what is it? And then, like, the more I heard him talk, and then the more, like, people that I know that know him talk to me, I'm like, man, this guy is solid as hell. Yeah. I don't even have to agree with him completely um, on everything because who would agree with me? Um, <laughs> but I, uh, <laughs> except an insane person. Right. Um, Paul Gordon, but, maybe. Uh... Yeah, exactly. Well, so there you go. Right. Um, but, you know, but I was like, I'm like, man, this guy's pretty solid. But, yeah, all that to say, so Andrew Cuomo is definitely going to win re-election. And so there was really no reason for him to. Right. He didn't have to do the bomb thing. He didn't have to jump out there and be like, no, I was one of the ones that got a bomb. Like, you, you're going to win. Like, it's <laughs> not, this isn't a badge of honor situation. <laughs> this is like, I got a bomb in 2018 and right. all I got was this lousy shirt. I was there. I saw it. Uh, I was there. I said, oh my gosh, yeah. there's a bomb and this is 2018. Right. <laughs> so. This bomb tried to face fist me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the bombs, the, the the ten bombs, not the eleven. Andrew Cuomo, you liar, <laughs> you pandering liar, lying jerk face. Yeah, you lying jerk face. You gosh, gosh darn jerk face. You gosh darn jerk oh, you, face. We'll, we'll have a Caleb go on to say what he has to say about. Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, the uh, the. The the other ten, they um, the real ones, the real ones, the real ones, uh, kind of. So, <laughs> so you know, they all had stamps that weren't you know marked off, uh, and then they're like, oh no, they were given to us by courier. Like, all right, sure. <laughs> okay. But also from. But also from the post office. Um, all right, right that's, sure. Yeah. We'll go with that. We'll go. With I, that. Yeah, I, 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 I'm. I'm we talked about this beforehand. I'm not a, I did not think that there was a child dungeon, rape dungeon at, uh, pizza, the comet space, the pizza place. What was Co it called? Uh, comet ping pong and pizza Co cosmic, cosmic pizza, no, cosmic comet. ping pong. Is it cosmic? cosmic? I never thought that cosmic, cosmic. Pizza. Yeah. Cosmic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cosmic. I'd never, I did not think that there is a, uh, intergalactic, uh, child rape camp in Mars. No. I was actually surprised to find out that there are chemicals in the water that are making the frogs gay, actually making them the opposite gender, but we'll go with gay. We'll go with gay. Um, that actually is true. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Um, but I didn't believe it because I'm like, they, they wouldn't do that. Turns out they would. Um, I like to pretend that I think the earth is flat. Part <laughs> of me hopes it is. I'm in the Just greatest flat earth group ever on Facebook. It's so, it's so much fun. I am in many flat earth groups. Are you? And I share... Yeah, well, they they seem unironic, but I share a lot of flat Earth stuff, and those guys are. Yeah, they're they're. Fun. I want it to be. I want the Earth to be flat, because because those people are dedicated, man. To, it would mean so much to them. And the other thing is, so you know when someone is obviously you agree with someone and you know they're right, but in general they're just so smug, you want them to be wrong even though you know they're right. Right. The people who spend their time arguing against a flat earth are often some of the most smug, self-interested, smarmy people. Not True. always. Not always. There are some people that are genuinely like, like, guys, this is stupid. What are we doing here? But th there are some people that, you know, it's like, oh, hey, here's a straw man that made itself that I can go after. I would, if we could just see the turtle's head come up around the, the, the horizon there and give us a little wink <laughs> and uh and 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 everyone sees it because if the turtle were to actually do that we'd see it yeah true i that's, mean there, there would definitely be awesome. some facebook video of that happening there would be i mean it would be like bigger than the moon on the horizon <laughs> which goes to the end right because it's flat and so we would see that and go holy crap and if i were to see that if that were to happen most people would be horrified. I would, I'd let out a little chuckle. And then I'd, uh, 
I, then I would, then I, I'd, I'd message a few people, a few choice people and say, now, w- 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 how you like flat earth now, schmuck? <laughs> so I want that to be true of the vote. I don't believe it. Yeah. No, I don't either. Because the- this conspiracy of the male thing, it's just really it's, like, it's so out there. I want to think it's real. I, well, I, I want to think that this I, legitimately I, happened that the way that they're saying, but there's just so much weird stuff about there's it. There's so like, much weird stuff about this. Like, I, I, no, then, if, if it did come from a male facility, where's the old stamp thing on, with the, the whatever the, the, the canceled stamp or processed the process yeah, thing over the stamp? Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, the, the ink that they put on it, the, the process stamp. Where's where's that? Right. Where is that? It's not there. And there's no barcodes for couriers. And I'm not saying that these people are just like <laughs> delivering, like hand delivering them, like. The post office is run by the government. Like, they make mistakes. Could they have messed up on 10 bombs being set out? Possibly. Oh, I would not for a second doubt that someone could send these out and the post office would okay, and let them through. Without standing. I have no doubt that could happen. Right. At all. Homeland Security routinely takes guns and runs them through to see if TSA catches them, and they almost never do. Right, yeah, they've got like a 95% fail rate or something yeah, some like that. Yeah, stupid. Yeah, they're sitting I don't, there, you I don't know, remember the number off the top of my head. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's over 90% fail rate. Right. If you want to get a... Well, <laughs> there's a there, if, if, if one was to want to put a gun onto a plane, there's a good chance they might be able to. I'm not going to advise you to do that. I'm not not going to recommend that. I would not recommend that. No. I'm a supporter of gun rights, but you're on a pressurized, uh, you're on a pressurized vehicle. You're in a pressurized tube. (laughs) Tube up in the stratosphere that you can't escape from. And if a bullet goes through that, you could actually tear the entire thing apart and everyone would die instantly. Right. So don't bring your gun, not like that. Even the nine you know, eleven hijackers you didn't people know didn't and all use that. guns. <laughs> they didn't. I mean, they they did not use firearms during nine eleven. They used box cutters, um, because they wanted to be able to use the plane right. for the thing that they were doing exactly. As opposed to it just you know being ripped to shreds by a small bullet going through the the. The wall. The, right. The plane side. The plane. <laughs> the side of the plane. The side of the, the old plane. flank of the plane. Um, so what did what did this even Yeah, so it could absolutely happen. Right. It could. Why was where's the can like you said, where's the canceled stamp or the or whatever? Whatever. Where is if it's it? courier, how did it go through to Florida? Come from Florida? Come from Florida. How did Florida. it go through that processing facility to then be hand delivered to New York by cur- like is it, Okay, so I know. Okay, were all of the all of the ones being delivered? Were they in New York? So I, the last I understood, but this was like four or five of them ago, was that yes, they were all still in the New York and surrounding areas. Uh, okay, the Clintons, um, CNN, um, possibly De Niro because he lives in like Tribeca or something. Yeah, like I'm that. certain. So, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, so I think that. But there's a whole bunch more now, so I don't know. Uh, Maxine Waters is out in California, That's so true. they're probably not unless she has a New York yeah. office, which she, she might. Which um, would be so weird, I though. But I don't I mean, know would... anymore. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I have. I have no idea. Like this is this is truly one of those fog of war things. And then we're 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 not going to hear a cohesive story for a while because no. there's a lot of information coming out. Oh yeah, and it, so it, for for getting how did they get there? Because there's no real answer. Like these look like they were hand delivered by the most idiotic person alive, <laughs> um, that somehow got it where yeah okay yeah this came through Miami now apparently, um, but it looks like they were hand- six stamps right six stamps. But then when you open this bomb, this package, to to see the bomb. It has a digital clock on the outside with the wires and everything going in. And it looks like something out of the show Chuck, for those of you who have seen it. 
Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, give me a minute. I'll be able to come up with a better one. Um, it looks like it looks like Wiley Coyote right, is going yeah. after the Roadrunner. I, I was going to go Rocky and Bullwinkle's bad guy, and I couldn't pull his name. E equally, equally valid. Right. It, it, it looks cartoonish. It looks cartoonish. It doesn't look. It, it's a literal pipe, which I know pythons are typically <laughs> kind of pipe, but pipeish. Um, it's a literal they pipe. pipe. Bomb. <laughs> it looks like the clock that Clockboy made. Uh, it doesn't it nothing does. about it looks real it really does look like the clock that clock boy made it does it looks like new the theory clock, boy, clock boys clock boy did this clock this boys is just clock sending boys these people revenge. clocks he is just <laughs> sending clocks to his favorite politicians oh, oh. <laughs> <He's so funny. laughs> God, I hope that's right. Uh, I want that to be true. And now he's like, I don't know what to do. Everybody and he won't say anything now because everyone thinks it's a fault. <laughs> oh, that is such a good one. Oh. So, <laughs> I want that to be true as much as I want the earth to be flat. God, I hope that's real. And for very similar reasons. Oh, you know, you earlier when I said, you know how you just don't say things, you, you have to pause to speak, and like that wasn't pausing. I just said that. <laughs> there was no thought going out at that, that No, moment. I'm glad you did. Yeah, I'm glad you too. did because that uh, is. <laughs> oh, man. That would be so funny. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> they didn't read the note from Clockboy. Well, they thought it was ironic. I hope you enjoyed this bomb, and he's serious. Like, right. You like my clock, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I want that to be true so much. Oh man! Oh, uh, so oh wow! So obviously, people on the left are saying that this is being done by hate groups like the Proud right, Boys in right. New York, yep. right? Um, like stuff like that. And a woman showed up at the Florida at the uh, Florida debate yesterday. The old Florida debate. Oh, uh, between DeSantis and Gillum. Yeah. Holding okay. a sign that said "fake news, fake bombs" or "fake bombs, fake news." I'm not really sure of the order, but you get it. And she was standing with the sign outside of the debate, and it's like, "Wow!" I would go with a little bit more investigation on this before I'm tossing out that one. That's a that's a quite a uh, she's she's uh, she's going ahead of the lead she thinks yeah. is going to come. Um, you know, she's just gonna. I I predicted that. Uh, Florida woman predicts future stories. Um, <laughs> Florida Nostradamus woman, yeah. Yeah. Florida precog. Um, she, <laughs> so the left is saying it's from like, you know, the Proud Boys and uh, the, the <laughs> hate group in New York. Uh, after after, after um, Gavin McGinnis <laughs> was done with his... Uh... Which... I don't know which one you're going to say right now because there, there, there are multiple. The, the swinging of the samurai sword? No, no, not the samurai sword. Are you talking about the ratings thing? I'm talking about, I'm talking about the... The protest? The Islamic protest? The protest against Islam. Yeah. Which we might as well talk about. Right. So we, I mean, we've teased it. Uh, Gavin McGinnis, for anybody who doesn't know who that is, he's a uh, correspondent, or he has his own show, I guess would be a better way to put it, on uh, CRTV. Right. Um, yep. He is banned from Twitter. Uh, I believe he's banned from Facebook. I'm not I sure. wonder why. I, I, I can't imagine. Um, but on his show, before his show, before a recording of his show. In the pre-show. In the pre-show. He apparently found the alleged dildo in the Kavanaugh verse. <laughs> he found Mike Shifley's dildo. Yeah. And uh, although that one was pink, so no. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't... <laughs> yeah. So he 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 found this dildo. Found he it. Found it. And as because a protest, of, because of all the ways you want a dildo, you want it just to be found. <laughs> Hey, what's this? Oh, it's a dildo. I've got a brilliant idea. To protest radical Islam. He took And of course dildo. to own the libs. Right, of course. For of those course. liberal tears. 
He shoved a dildo way up. All the way into his rectum. Yep. All the way up there. And then once he was on the air in the during, not the post pre-show, in the actual show, he pulled down his pants and pooped it out? Ejected it. He ejected. He ejected. I, I don't, you know, I'm not good with, I don't know a lot of homoerotic uh, technical terms. He ejected, mm. released I think the, that, the dildo. I think that would be the best way to put that. He, he released it. He released it. From his, it. Right. his hold. Yes. And he did this because, of course, if you want to make a powerful statement against radical Islam, there's no other way that you could possibly do that as a heterosexual man who is the leader. Isn't he the leader of the Proud Boys? Is he? I know he's one of the founders, but I think he's like the head of the Proud Boys. Oh. He's, he's definitely one of the, I mean, he's definitely big in the Proud Boys. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. Anyway, right. anyway, he's big with the Proud Boys. This uh, Proud Boys are a, a, a right-wing, Trump-friendly uh, group that fight against Antifa on the streets. So if you're seeing someone fight Antifa, they're probably related to the... the in, they're probably either a Proud Boy or related to the Proud Boys. In New York, anyway. In New York, yeah. Yeah, um, this... yeah I, didn't, I didn't know he was... Uh, I, don't watch, I don't watch him, so I, I didn't know... I do not watch him, and um, there's reasons. <laughs> I'm glad I did. Right. Um, yeah. No, he is the founder of the Proud Boys. Okay. And All right, Gavin. Um, it's it's named after a song on Aladdin called "Proud of Your Boy." Hang on. <laughs> there's a lot for me to process in that one. Aladdin. Right. A Disney cartoon about an Arab Muslim. I was going to say theoretically Muslim. They, I don't think they ever come out and say it, but I mean, just based no, on... because they, they say Allah in the... I don't know about the right. original yes, do. fable, but in the Disney movie, the they Dis say yeah, Allah. No, at least, that's true. At least once yeah, no, yeah, 100%. You're right. Correct. I, I had forgot. It's been probably 20 years since I've seen that movie. I mean, they weren't heavy with it. Like, they weren't, you know, praying right. five times a day and all that stuff, but it was definitely... I mean, they said Allah. So, right, I mean, yeah. The, 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 there was a reference there that he was a he was a that Muslim. he was you know he was Muslim so right. definitely the right way to go with that. So he named his group the Proud Boys after a song in a movie about a fictional Muslim character from a Disney movie about a fictional Muslim character, and then musical musical musical, and then to protest Islamic extreme Islam. Uh, he stuck a dildo as far up his rectum as he could. It was all the way in there. All the way. Not to, to the point where I didn't know what was about to happen. Yeah. There was no, there was no um, indicator. Right. Of what was going to happen. Old Gavin McGinnis. So. His show's called Get Off Not do that for our run. patrons. No. By the way. No, we're not doing that for our patrons. There, there's a limit. Yeah. Though, too so yes i don't know how we got on this subject um but... okay so the bombs um <laughs> the bombs. of course that was the segue for right me. so the bombs um so yeah people are saying like people like gavin mcginnis are doing this um people there, on the that left, was the, okay right, right people okay. on the left are saying people like the proud boys and gavin mcginnis are the right. ones sending right. these bombs people on the right like the woman here in florida are saying that these are fake and they aren't real and they're just being used to try to you know go against try to go against the uh the, the 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 right, right. They're to to, to try to right say, uh, oh look, they're right wing extremists sympathy for the left, yeah. right. The right wing extremists are sending sending these bomb. The people who think the right wing extremists are sending these bombs to all of our highest and best, Robert De Niro, right, right, right. Um, and that we're going, you know, that way we'll uh, garner a couple extra votes because they don't want extreme right wing murders out there. Um, both plausible. Both could be true. I don't know which. That's the thing. They're both, yeah. They could both be. I, I'm still going for Clockboy, but uh, I like that. I, I, I want it to be Clockboy. I do too. So because then it would be kind of a then it would be like well, no one was trying to hurt anyone. You know, like it, it kind of becomes a feel good story. Like right. I would just they like my clock. 
Um, I just want everybody to enjoy my clock. This happened. How did it happen again? I, got I make a clock again. at school and the police come and then I send clocks to people and it's a at, terrorist threat. At breath. least they can't expel me. Um, this is clearly Islamophobia. It is. Um, and like here in the States, those are those are the two theories that are going around. Like it's yep. not... It, I mean, granted, many people are forgetting about the uh, the ricin or the chemical the, the mailings. The that, suspicious packages the, with ricin in them that were sent to right. Trump administration officials and Ted, Ted Cruz. Cruz. Right. And Ted Cruz, who probably sent it to himself. Who might have sent these bombs. He may have sent these bombs. Um, but uh, I... but <laughs> he... Um, so... You've got these two conspiracy theories going on on both sides. It can't just be some lunatic who, you know, probably doesn't care and he's just finding it funny. Uh, Which sadly is the most plausible, viable option of all these. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I'm going to have to pull it up because uh, I want to make sure that I get everything that our friend across the pond. Oh, the, yeah. The I like this theory. Yeah, not as much as Clock Boy, not as much but this as one's Clock actually some, somewhat more plausible. So our friend, uh, Matt Johnston, who did the opening music for tonight and will be doing the closing music for tonight and for every episode of The Writer's Block. Uh, he is the Narcissist Cookbook. Um, he asked me, he, we were messaging earlier today, and he said, can I share a dumb conspiracy theory with you? And I said, oh, God, please, because who doesn't want to hear it? <laughs> who doesn't want that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's... Everybody wants that. He goes, well, it's hardly a hot take, but Turkey have been handling the, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name, Khashoggi? Khashoggi, Khashoggi, something Khashoggi. like that. Khashoggi, yeah. okay. The Khashoggi assassination like Taylor Swift drops an album. It's been amazing to watch. They're dominating news cycle after news cycle, releasing new headline baiting information whenever it runs the risk of being swept away by something new. And of course... The U.S. government wants it to go away because their relationship with the Saudis is important. Very true. He's, he's dead on. These um, are all true things so far. Yeah, so far. So then, out of bleeping nowhere... Oh, I've cursed so many times on the show already, accidentally. <laughs> so out of fucking nowhere, bombs get sent to a half dozen... Man, a little bit more, but, you know, he's in England. It takes a while for the news to get there. Um, they let, measure things differently, too. Right, that's true. I think they're on the metric. Um, it's, it's six in metric. <laughs> six in metric is ten. Um, <laughs> actually, that would be right. <laughs> Three point one miles is five kilometers. Six kilometers of people. Right, six kilometers of people. Anyway, uh, go ahead. Uh, Left wing totems and a memo gets leaked. Uh, this will be something else we may get to. Maybe not. Uh, and a memo gets leaked, which I don't think it was a memo getting leaked. I believe it was actual. Like the tit- what Title Nine now is? I, I, yeah, that's like a news release. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. was a news. Re- okay, and a memo gets leaked saying gender is defined by your genitalia. You couldn't right. engineer a better attempt to distract the left if you tried. Look, it's the things you love: Hillary Clinton and gender politics. Look, stop looking at the other thing. And then and right wing violence and right wing violence. And then he said, and unless Turkey drops their banging club mix of cut off his fingers, then his head by man with bone saw featuring Washington post journalist. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. And I can't say he's wrong. That is a very, that is almost as plausible as it's some insane guy. Right. Who's convinced that he needs to, you know, kill Democrats, but isn't tied to, any real, you know, organization. He's just a nuts nutcase, like probably the nutcase was that was sending off rice and packets. Right. Um, that's actually a good. It's if, a really if we're good. We're gonna do conspiracy really theories. Good theory. That's like a real plausible one. Yeah. Oh shit. Um. Yeah. No, that was a really good theory. That was a. That's a good theory. I know. From I, across the pond there. Yes, I was definitely uh, shocked by that one because I was not expecting that to come out but well. that's that was actually a pretty good one i uh i don't have a i i, I don't have a reason that that isn't true like right. why i would think it's not true that's actually you got the everything in there is technically correct and even okay he he could possibly be wrong about like the trump administration putting this out because the people on the left need the saudis just as much as the people on the right 
It could be the Saudis doing it. And it could be the Saudis just doing it. Just to be like, well, let's just get these into the U.S., send them to these people. It'll cause an uproar. It'll get everything off of us. The Saudis don't care about anything. And I mean, Chuck Todd. Like, <laughs> Chuck Todd thinks it's our, our employers, the Russians. Right. So, so yeah. but we're going to ne next meeting. Let me, let me strongly say I disagree with that. The Russians I know would never do would such never a thing. Would never do such a thing. But at the next business meeting that we have with these Russians, at the very next one, uh, we're going to bring this up and we're going to get to the I will bring it up and, and I will say, hey, if you guys are doing this. If you guys are sending out these pipe bombs. If you guys are sending out pipe not... bombs, I'm going to strongly agree to disagree with you. Yes. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. But thanks. Actually, to who, thanks to whomever. Us. Is sending out this yes, exactly. Bomb. If you're watching this and you've been the one sending out pipe bombs, which so, I hate to say is possible. Um, <laughs> I, Please stop. Don't do not do, do this. Don't do it. Um, this is not a good thing that I, you're doing. I know that we're both smiling while we're saying this, but please stop. Um, we're smiling at the irony, not at what you're doing. Right. We're not laughing with you. <laughs> right. We're laughing at you. So we're laughing at the entire situation. We're laughing at this situation, but we're very serious when we say, "Do not send, do not, no more, do not send bombs in the mail." So, so before Matt, the other Matt, not me, obviously, um, before he sent me his theory, which I, man, it's good, it's really good, and it kind of points to Saudis. Um, before he sent me that, I was um, kind of on the I. I was the one leaning toward, you know, Trump's been going out there and saying, you know, jobs, not mobs. So somebody on the left sent this out to all the people on the left, knowing that they weren't ever going to actually hurt anybody. But in order to uh, say, look, no, the right's full of mob, mob rule, too. Right, right, that's, right, right. To, to, to blunt that. Right. That uh, narrative. Right. That's kind of where I was with it. Um But in a more international way. Yeah, I'm because because I'm trying, you know, again, it's it's one of those like, what's the motive things? But it's also like, who the hell would do this? Like, who has the chutzpah to do something like this, except an insane person right. or clock boy or Ted Cruz? Um, and the Saudis actually would do something like this. And then if they got caught, they'd right. be like. Screw you. Like, I mean, they're, right. like, yeah, I mean, I was they're, they're they wouldn't the care. That, like, they don't care. No. By the way, Jacob LaBelle says you guys should get the guys from Major League Liberty in here. Okay. Okay. I'm I, good I, with that. I would love to have the guys from Major League Liberty in here. I would I I would love to have that. Jacob, if you have the contact information for the guys from Major League Liberty, if you could uh, just send it to the old DMs. Slide up in our DMs with slide the Major League our, Liberty stuff. Steve, I will slide Steven, up in the Major League Liberty uh, DMs. St and Steven, say, hey. Steven will get back to you. <laughs> We'll have Steve in contact, um, Major, League Liberty, Major League Liberty, and uh, hopefully he didn't botch that. <laughs> Which he will. Um, around here. Everything. So Steven. many things. Um, but oh, and I have to, I, I, I hate to do this. I, I don't hate to do I don't know why I said that. I don't mind doing this at all. Um, I got a question on my show last night on my Ask Me Anything episode from one of our devoted fans, Sarah Branion. Very and do you mind if I, I ask this I now? I 100% know you pronounced that name wrong, and but it's the only way that I, it's the only way I can pronounce it now that you've said it. Well, how is, what, what, how is it pronounced? You said Brainian, right? I did say Brainian. Brainian. Brain, brain. Man, I don't know. I can't remember right now. Brainian? Brainian. Brain, Brainian. I don't know. Um, but Did I now make it where all you hear is Brainian? Yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. It's okay. So I didn't see this question because she messaged, messaged it to me while I was live. So I didn't see it. So she said, uh, I want to, and I haven't read this yet. I wanted to call in, but I, ow, but I was working. Let me start by saying that I thought that I was a run of the mill libertarian. Your show has taught me that there is no run of the mill libertarian. <laughs> uh, but 10 years ago, I paid an actual silver to go see Michael Badnerick speak. And he sold me on libertarianism. I guess I am a minarchist uh, per Mohammed's assessment. As an anarcho-capitalist, can you tell me how people are kept in check in this system? Does this mean that in some small cul-de-sac, they could decide to forcibly enslave farmhands and no one will stop them? 
or that rapists get away with it unless someone else shoots them vigilante style. I agree with most of what you say as far as lack of government being a good thing. That is my loose end. I wonder if we'd end up being run by Amazon in your model. That very possibly. Uh, uh, and it's okay with me if you answer that on your next open mic show. So that's a great question, actually. That's, that is actually the hang up that Minarchist particularly will say is like, well, who's going to stop rape, uh, murder, you know, the things that we actually, when I hear that a cop stopped a rapist, I don't go, oh my gosh, the police state needs to end. I'm like, okay, good. You know, that's a rape that got stopped. Or if I hear right. that a cop stopped a murder or that, you know, a murderer is going to be executed or something. I don't really get that upset because these are people that are harming people. And I'm, you know, I don't like the state and I think there are better ways to do this, but I'm okay with that happening. Right. Like, right. My, did I, am I, did, am I still on? Yeah, you're still on. Okay, good. I said, right. And then I'm like, am I alone? Anyway, so, um, so, you know, saying like, could this happen? First of all, in our status society, we are not in, an, in an anarchist society. We are in a statist society. Uh, there is a monopoly of, of violence the, you know, uh, that is uh, imposed by the government who says we are the only people who can morally use violence on a mass scale. Um, because we are the, you know, the, the, the pillars of justice and we are the ones that decide what is right and wrong from, you know, from a, uh, um, a decision standpoint. And we will use whatever violence to bring people into compliance for that. In that society, there are people doing these things. There are people raping people. There are people that are, uh, you know, um, you know, forcibly enslaving farmhands and keeping children for, you know, child porn or for, you know, rape or I mean, uh, every possible bad thing that you can think of is happening right now. And the only way to stop them often is through the application of force. Right. It just so happens that in our society, if I hear that there's a, a child rape camp and I go, screw this, and I get my guns out and I get me and Matt and a bunch of other you know people go out with guns and kill them, we're going to go to jail because we're not authorized to do that. Now, will a jury convict us is a whole other question, but we will face jail time. We will face punishment for, you know, uh, uh, um, aggravated homicide or whatever else, you know, whatever charges they would, they would, they would do, even though what we're doing is completely just and moral. If the police do that, the exact same thing we do, go there with guns, try to stop them and use whatever force is necessary, necessary to stop them. They don't get in any trouble right. because they have that monopoly of force. They have authorized themselves and only themselves to use force in those types of situations. So the short answer to your question is that nothing actually changes. You, you said, you know, does this mean that in some small cul-de-sac, they could decide to forcibly enslave farmhands and no one will stop them uh, unless someone shoots them? That's true now. And the answer is yes, that, that can always happen, including in this society or in a society with a much more intrusive and, and obstructive uh, you know, government that's involved in every aspect of our life, that can still happen. I'm sure that there is still all these different things happening in places like North Korea or, you know, communist China or, you know, places with very large uh, obtrusive, you know, uh, obstructive and, and infringing governments. These things still happen because it's impossible for them to stop every bad thing from happening. Um, what I would say is that in a true free market voluntary society, you can't stop bad people from doing things, but when you decentralize that ability to to use violence in a, in a in a in a way to uphold basic rights and property and lives and and safety and those types of things, you're going to get better outcomes because now the most just thing that I can think of in that situation is the you know the 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 parents of those children that are being, you know, held for, you know, rape or whatever, or, or people that are associated with them or people they hire or people who are just, you know, interested third parties to say, you know what, this is disgusting. That is every bit as just as the police doing it. In my mind, it's more just. And if you decentralize that and you allow all 320 million people to stop things from that, like that from happening, instead of only the, what is it? 3 million police officers that there are, you're going to get better outcomes. So that's the short answer. That wasn't short, but that's my yeah, I mean, answer. You know, it's like in uh, the movie Clue, where it's like, to make a long story short, too late. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so my my longish, shortish answer to that is is 
what I just said. Gotcha. And if I, because she lives here. Um, so if I see her around, I'll be like, hey, just so you know, I was answered on Muddy Wires of Freedom from. The yeah, that was answered. And I apologize for butchering your last name. Right. <laughs> um, and it, I'm, I'm going to, she's going to be like, no, that's how you say it. I'm gonna, oh, okay. No, well, then that, that'll be fine too. <laughs> yeah, be I am fine. both sorry and you're welcome. Right. Um, <laughs> so, um, God, I hope it's clock play. I really hope it's Oh my gosh. Play. That would be amazing. I, if it's clock boy, if it's clock boy, the earth is flat. Yeah. How about that? That's actually probably accurate. That's probably really accurate. And if the earth is flat, then it's clock boy. Those are pretty much mutually right, those inclusive. Are, right. Me, me. Those, those are two <laughs> things definitely happening together. Um, all right. Uh, and I want them both. I think that covers just better. And that was just about an hour. That had to be more than an hour. No, it was an hour 40. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, uh, before we go, uh, predictions, are we still, have we started with predictions on the election? We have not started with predictions on the elections yet, so we can start today. You first. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> 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 predictions, election. Okay, like, are we just are we going specific or are we going general? Like whatever you want. I'm I'm okay. going to stick to general. Um, but you can if you have specific seats you want to predict. I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so I'm going to go. Uh, the Republicans are keeping the Senate. Yeah. 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 That's, that, that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, I, I think they keep the house. Like I know that earlier we said it's like a one in six chance. Or yeah. Whatever. It's, 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 it's longish odds, but I what, think it's less long than it was before. What are the, what's the numbers in the house right now? Do you know? Do you know off the top of your head how many uh, seats they have? I know that they would have to win. I think twenty three seats to to overtake to flip it. Yeah. Okay. I think the the Dems are going to make a huge showing. I they're not going to get twenty. They're not going to get twenty three. Mm. I say they're not getting over eighteen. Okay. That's that's okay. Uh, um. I, and that could very, very well happen. I, I, my prediction is close to yours. Um, I think that the Republicans are going to gain two seats in the Senate. Hey, re real quick. Uh, thanks, J uh, thanks, Jacob. Uh, yeah, message Huey and see if he's down. Oh, cool. That's awesome. We can't wait to have you. Yeah. That is awesome. We are as eager about that as Clockboy was to <laughs> have Hillary see the clock he made for. Yeah. So I think that the uh, the Senate is going that the Republicans are going to gain two seats, maybe three, maybe one. I think they're going to gain two seats in the Senate. You think they're going to gain the Republicans? Okay. Yeah. No. I, I, I've I've from what I have seen in terms of the layout, I think that the, the best odds are that I'm actually going with the safe bet. Believe it or not, that they're going to gain uh, two seats in the Senate. Okay. In the House. I think they're going to, I, I, I'm, unless something major shifts or unless they completely botched the polls, even worse than they did in 2016, right. which is possible, but I, I don't, I think they've retooled their polls since then. Um, uh, they're doing a lot more tracking polls than they used to do, which they didn't used to like. And it turned out those were the accurate ones, but the, so I think they're going to more than likely they're going to lose seats. And I think it's going to be like, I think that they're going to, oh, man, I, I, I think that the, I do, I think right, if it happened right now, I think that the Democrats would get just enough to get an, uh, a majority. And it would be such a close majority that if any red state Democrats, you know, peeled off and didn't like who the Democrats peeled, you know, put forward for, you know, if like if they, if they insist on shoving Pelosi down everyone's throat as the right. speaker right. and a couple of red state and a couple of progressive Dems are like, no. And, you know, a couple of red state Dems peel off and join the Republicans and, you know, in a surprise mo movement, uh, you know, some uh, 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 squish of a Republican becomes the speaker. Um, 
that's how close I think it'll be one way or the other. Right. Um, I don't think it's going to be the blowout for Democrats and, that they think it's going to be. And uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob LeBeau just commented and he said, uh, Republicans always keep the House. Which, see, and that's the thing. See, and they, okay, so before 1994, before 1994, I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I believe it had been 60 years since the Republicans last had control of the House. Right, right. Um, and then they and then they lost it from 06 to... 10. To 2010, and they've had it ever since and then. And they've had it since then. So, I don't... I, I, see, Jacob, then that's why I, I, I wince when they say that they're likely to to keep the, that they're likely to lose the house. And I, I see they're, you know, I mean, again, they're the ones doing all these cross tabs, but I'm like, if the Republicans, if the, if, I realize that this is a good year for Republicans in terms of what seats are up. And that's why it's, it, they're favored to win two seats, even if they lose in the generic ballot or whatever. I get that, but man, I have a hard time picturing. I, it's really going to come down to do the suburbs do what they're telling people to do, or are they just virtue signaling while they then turn around and vote for Trump because they think that's what's best in there for their pocketbook. Right. Which is very plausible. Which is very plausible. Either that or like, you know, I got, I got pulled and uh, they were like, Hey, so who are you voting for in the, who are you voting for in the upcoming election? I was like, look, I'm a libertarian. They were like, Oh, so you're a Republican. I went, no, um, wrong. Uh, and they, right. Right. I said, well, you guys don't have anybody running. Do you? I was like, no, we don't have anybody running. She said, who are you going to vote for? And I was like, man, I don't, I don't really like any of them. And uh, I'm actually friends with one of the guys running in my district, so I'm not right, 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 right. I'm in. But, um, but you know, I'm like, I really don't really like anybody running for anything right now. I don't really like the guy running for governor, or the guy running for senate. The guy actually, right. the guy running for house isn't bad. George, uh, George Buck Jr. Um, he's not bad. He's not great, but he's not bad. Uh. So I'd actually probably vote for him. I don't know if I'm voting for Rick Scott or DeSantis. I, I, I had so then you told them you weren't voting for anyone. No, I mean, they said... Oh, you, they, you told they, them you were voting Republican? They reworded it and they said, if these were the only two voting and you were going to vote, what would you vote? And I was like... If that's how they're wording it, that's a garbage poll. It, I, I think that it was the Republican Party that called me. Oh, okay. Well, then. Uh, yeah, I think I I, I think that it was is a garbage bowl. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. I think it was just an internal thing. So <laughs> right, I just right, right. Gave, right. I, I kind of gave him an answer. I was on the. I was taking a twosy, and I answered the phone because <laughs> I'm classy. Um, but so I just kind of gave him the answer that they were looking for. If it yeah. ended Democrats, I uh, probably would have just said I was voting for Gillum and gotten it over with. <laughs> just leave me alone. I'm in the bathroom. Right. I'm yeah. Just, I um. So the last couple of times I've been called by political parties, I try to red pill them on anarcho-capitalism and uh, anarcho-capitalism and they um, hang up on me. Of course. No, what are you going to do? Um, but uh, uh, like, I'm like, why do you vote? And then I start breaking down and they're like, um, are you planning on voting? And I'm like, Hey, you know what? Let me tell you about how you can receive services in an economy. Like, I mean, and then they, they hang up. Um, anyway. So Jacob, I'm kind of, you know, my entire life, I've seen the Republicans keeping the House because of the distribution of the voters. So even if in 06, the reason they lost was because six years into the Bush presidency, everyone was like, all right, we're sick of this. Let's go find Democrats that are going to do the same thing. I don't know that people have that appetite right now. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think they do. I'm not meeting people who say, I liked Trump, but now I don't. I'm seeing people who said, I hated Trump and I hate him even more now. I've seen people who say, I loved Trump and I love him even more now. I've seen people who go, hey, you know what? I was not a fan of Trump, but look at what look at the Democrats. And I've seen Democrats who were like, you know, Bernie can still win this thing. I'm not seeing, and of course, the libertarians who are like. You know, right, they're all over the place. Right, yeah, whatever they say. Um and then me. But uh, I'm not seeing this groundswell of people who were like, yeah, you know what? I used to support Trump and now I support the Democrats. And and I'll tell you something. This whole like silent Trump voter thing was real. We know it was real now. People who are telling everyone else 
who probably are also doing the same thing. Yeah, this Trump is real bad news. And I don't like him. And now, you know, he's bad or whatever. But they're like, you know, they like lower taxes. They like less regulations. They aren't worried about the stuff that he's doing that aren't good. They don't necessarily know much about trade. Sounds good to them. America first. Why not? And but they're not going to, you know, they're still signaling to the rest of the, you know, white uh, suburban crowd that they're, you know, against all of this, just like they did know in 2016, probably. And then they're going to vote Republican and, and show up at, you know, the, the the watch party and pretend they're as upset as everyone else when it doesn't go that way. So could that happen? Yeah. yeah. If it wasn't so skewed, you know, by the time the actual election happened in 2016, people had already stopped following it because at, at one point, you know, just a few weeks prior, Clinton was so far ahead in the polls that it was like a joke. It was like 97% likely to win or whatever. I remember 538 telling people at the end there, Nate Silver saying, hey guys, um, this is winnable. Trump has a better chance of winning the presidency than the the um, Indians do of winning the World Series or whatever whatever the thing is, or the Cubs do of winning the World and the Cubs won the World Series. And, right, they won the, the Cubs won the World Series in 2016. Yeah. It was whoever they said had, you know, a lesser chance of winning the World Series than Trump did of winning the election won the World Series. And I'm like, yeah, it's gotten a lot closer than people want to admit. And everyone had just kind of shut down emotionally. And they're like, we're going to rebuke Trump and he's never going to grab a pussy again or whatever. Um, so, yeah, so I. He's I, just grabbing I, them all simultaneously right now. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, I can I can I can see I I, I can see. I'm going to pr- go because I haven't in the past. I'm going to go with the somewhat safe prediction that the Democrats win by a, a small, a small uh, margin that it's not going to be a blowout for either side. Um, so you're saying that they're going to take the house, that they're going to take the house, but by a, 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 a relatively small, not, not by 20, you know, if they, if it takes 23, they're going to get 25 or 26. Okay. But I, I would, I am, this is not a, you know, I'm not like, I'm certain it's going to happen. I could just, I could almost as easily see them. I think it's the good money is on them winning seats, having more seats than they had prior in right. the house. I could see them winning 20 and losing their freaking minds. Yeah. And That's then we'll a... have to do over unders on our, on our rest numbers. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going under 18. I'm going 18 or under. Oh yeah. And that's very possible. I could see that happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I was, I was going to say if we wanted to go into like specifics, but I don't want to go into specifics. Cause I'd have oh, to and actually... the only other thing is, yeah, me either. And the only other thing is I haven't eaten all day. Um, the only other thing is that um, I think the Democrats will have more gubernatorial seats. They'll, they'll have more governor's mansions than they do now. I think they'll win. Um, I don't, I, I think the win in Florida, I hate to say that for you. I think the win in Florida, I don't think that, uh, that Stacy lady is going to win in Georgia. No. Um, and I haven't really followed the other stuff all that closely, but I, I think they're going to have a net win just because the Republicans have so many freaking governor's mansions right now. Right. I don't, I don't I mean, see them pulling that number. God, the Florida one. This one, the, it's so weird here. Cause it's like, yes, Rick Scott's up in the polls and for Senate and Andrew Gillum is up in the polls for governor. It's like, how is that even, how is that possible? That's not even possible. Rick DeSantis is a terrible candidate. He was a, he has not done a good job. You he, have a guy who has been accused of lying to the FBI about receiving tickets from the FBI. And Andrew Gillum straight faced responds. He goes, well, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, Hey, you know, let's, let's be honest here. Let's, let's face it. Uh, these are all allegations to, you know, these are all racist allegations that you know uh stereotype me as a as a as a black man it's like no no, no it's, it's no, not no. it's it's uh, you you took tickets from fbi agents pretending to be contractors and at, lied last, about it. at last night's debate it was apparently just just barbs flying from either side right and desantis called, called gillum andrew the entire night he didn't call him uh Mayor Gillum, I guess, would have been the appropriate way to do it. Um, didn't call him Mayor Gillum. Just called him Andrew the entire night just to piss him off. And it worked. He got so mad. It worked, but... I mean, it's just... 
it's a complete lack of respect on the debate stage. And I don't, it, right. I don't it, agree but, with it and I don't but like within, it, but oh within my the, God, this is entertaining. Within the narrative of it being a referendum on whether you think DeSantis is a white supremacist, because I guess he was a, a he, he didn't, or he says he didn't know or whatever, that, you know, he's a, a moderator in the, um, oh, in the, he's Facebook. a moderator of a, White Facebook nationalist page. Facebook group or, or whatever. Right. And then Gillum said something like, I'm not saying you're racist. I'm just saying that racists think that you're racist or something like that. And he didn't have a good response to that. And, you know, I, 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 I think Gillum's going to win just because DeSantis sucks as a, as a candidate. I don't think he's for everything I've seen. It's like, man, he's not really doing a good job. And you know, as much as I don't like DeSantis, especially I don't like him for Florida because he is built for federal. He's built, okay. he's built for federal. Um, and he um, he's only doing this so he can check it off as a box before he runs for president. I know that. I 100% know that. I know that's what he's doing. Um, but while in Washington, the dude slept in his office the entire time he was there. He did not get housing. He turned down um, uh, the congressional uh retirement turned it down oh, wow he's like i don't want it he turned down the special health benefits that you get if you're in congress like he's done a lot of things that i'm like all right like that's actually what i'm looking for in my right, right. that's what i'm looking for in my elected leaders but you are running the campaign and, and that's what i mean i don't know i've never heard of him before this he could be a very solid guy i don't i don't know from what I've seen from his campaign and I've seen it from mostly right wing sources, I'm like, you suck yeah. in this campaign or your campaign team sucks or whatever. Like you have not done a good job uh, uh, stating your case for why you should be governor of Florida. And this guy who has some really hang on, major, hang on real quick, Jacob, um, if you're still watching uh, the guys that run major league Liberty, their names are Huey and Louie. Please tell me that's accurate because you said you were going to message Huey and now you're saying Louie is interested. That could be a Lewis though. It could be a Louis. God. Well, that's Huey and Louie. Which would be. then be Huey Lewis. Oh, that would be Huey Lewis. And I'm fine with both of those. Yeah, and I'm I look okay with both. Yeah, now, now I'm okay with both of it. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. But he, so he, yeah. And I was just saying he, I, his campaign has been, garbage and a half so he said so jacob one thing jacob said was i think you guys are discounting the yeezy effect with with kanye that's another one that's a, actually a really good point so here's a fun thing and i am the 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 resident hip-hop guy the resident uh uh, uh finger on the pulse of the african-american community in the united states uh, for muddied waters media and uh there has been a very interesting thing the over what you know these polls that say that trump has 30 percent support didn't no no it's not 30 it's not 20 but there is a large number of non-politically it is not uncommon now to see black people who don't like trump and who are upset at some of the things kanye has said and who are still totally into the whole anti-trump thing who will say stuff like how was Obama any better for, than us? Right. And it is not uncommon at all to see uh, uh, black, particularly black men who were like, I've, you know, what are you telling me that Trump did that I'm supposed to be upset about? And, and it, the, what the, the interesting thing about, and one of my, my friends, uh, Wayne um, Bradley is uh, head of African or was the head of African American engagement for the uh, Michigan Republican party. And one thing he said is that Donald Trump is hip hop. If you look at hip hop, first of all, the number of times he's referenced in hip hop is in the hundreds, maybe not as much now in a, in a negative thing. Um, um, oh, his name is Lo Lewis Huey. Oh, <laughs> um, but the, um, the, the number of times he's been referenced and if you look, I mean, there, if you look up, you know, Trump with Snoop Dogg or Trump with Ice Cube or Trump, with, he was, everyone was hanging out with him. It wasn't until he ran as a Republican and started 
uh, even after he said his stuff with uh, Obama and the birther stuff, rappers are still loving him. Oh, yeah. Because he kind of typifies the whole, I have money, F you, I don't care. I do what I want with women and, and you know, I live my life however I want to and screw you if you don't like it. He, he embodies, you know, the, the there's conscious hip hop where they talk about society and all that stuff and most deaf and people like that. The more mainstream hip hop of like, I got money, I got this, I got that, I, get, I got that and I do what I want is what Donald Trump is and has been doing since the 1970s. Um, and so, and especially where so much of hip hop originates from New York, um, I mean, it's it, Donald Trump is the most hip hop white person uh, in terms of the, 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 how do I say this? In terms of he embodies mainstream hip hop in a way that I don't know a lot of other actual people who, who do that. And so there are a lot of black people who are like being told all this stuff now and they're like, all right, how is that different than Jay-Z or, you know, whatever. Um, and so... That, you know, they're, they're, in the same way that there are a lot of suburban white people that are like, oh, yeah, I hate Trump and, and they're going to vote for Trump or they're going to vote Republican and then pretend that they didn't. There are potentially a lot of black people that are going to vote Republican or just not vote Democrat. Right. And that could change. Put it this way. If, if the polls are this far off, like if, if they truly do hold the House and, and win in the Senate and even win House seats or whatever the people on the right are saying is really going to happen. If that actually happened, then polls are absolutely meaningless and people's own words are absolutely meaningless, which is very possible because virtue signaling is a real thing. Yes, it so, is. 100%. Very, very possibly. It is. Um, yeah, two hours. Yeah, we, Two hours. We definitely filled that hour. We definitely filled that hour. We did. With our five subjects. Right. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, uh, do you have anything else? All I have to say is, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the Muddy Waters of Freedom for two hours. And uh, <laughs> some of you were actually us. there for two hours, so thank you. <laughs> there were people there for the. You are the real ones. You are. Some you, of y'all are some real ones. Yeah, you are some real ones. We are real. You are real, real ones for us. Um, so tune in next week for our normal time uh, on Tuesday night Tuesday. for the Muddy Waters of Freedom. And then tune in uh, the following day on Wednesday, where I will have the beautiful and talented Paul Gordon as my guest. <laughs> yes. Paul Gordon. Wow. You're just following him up again, huh? Oh, yeah. Paul Gordon. I don't give a damn. I will bring Paul Gordon on my show as often as that man will come on. Well, yeah, it's just so funny Gordon's that you had Lou Sander on first, and then you had Paul Gordon on the week after that. Oh, there wasn't a shot in hell that I was going to have Lou Sander on without having Paul Gordon on afterwards. I'm made, not getting in the middle of that. I would have made him sweat for a minute. <laughs> like, you know, I got this other guy I think I'm going to do first. Yeah, no, I, I don't need that kind of heat in my life. So I, I Paul Gordon's going to be on. Um, yeah. So Paul Gordon's going to be on. And then Thursday is uh, the writer's block. And uh, is that it's still a TB, TB that's a, a yeah, the, yeah, that's a TBA for who's going to be on it. Of Lou that. Sander is going to be on. <laughs> Man, that, I try to keep that show to an hour. I'm not bringing Lou on. If you're trying Actually, to keep anything to an hour, yeah, neither Lou Sander or Paul Gordon can or come Paul on. Gordon nor Spike Cohen are 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 the the, right. the option for you there, unless you give me all thing to talk about. I think, and then I, we can we. Can. I do think that one week, and I'm not sure uh, which week, possibly election week or something like that. Like we should just do a muddied waters entire three day, but it's like we do muddied waters of freedom on Tuesday, and then we do my fellow Americans together on Wednesday, on Wednesday yeah, and then writers on Wednesday. block on Thursday together, and we just just run the entire thing. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm fine with that. It makes it easier to plan, and also I can't imagine there's not going to be a hell of a lot of stuff to talk. There's going to be so much so. to talk about that week. And so, we'll just, you know, to bring on a guest and ask them about, you know, their, their, what their work is. It's like, I can't talk about that right now. There's this friggin' election that just happened. So, right. so that, that's actually a, a good working idea. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm sure my wife will be thrilled too. Yeah. She'll be real um, happy with me. She'll be really happy about that. So guys, thank you so much. Tune yeah. in next Tuesday, Money Waters of Freedom next Wednesday, my fellow Americans and next Thursday for the writer's block. That's right. And remember you can follow each and every one of these episodes on all forms of social media, including Facebook 
which is facebook.com slash Muddy Waters of Freedom. You can follow us on YouTube by looking. I changed this today, by the way. Uh, by, you have to search for Muddied Waters Media. If we can get to the certain number that we need, I can say youtube.com slash Muddied Waters Media. But until then, it, you have to search for it. On Instagram, we're at Muddied Waters of Freedom. And on Twitter, we are at Muddied underscore Waters. And if you don't want to do all that, you can go to muddiedwatersoffreedom.com. That's right. And it's all there. It's all there. Every all of time. our social media is there. All of our episodes are there. That's right. Got a contact form? You want to fill out the contact form and talk with us? You can do that. You can slide up in our contact form. And, and very soon, we're going to have a Patreon. Yes. It's actually live right now if you want to go and try to find it. Um, but uh, <laughs> we, we aren't officially releasing it yet because we still have get to do your, some work. Get your dollar a month ready, America. That's right. Because we're going to rock your world. And um, yeah, I'm not going to say that yet, but there's a, there's going to be some, gonna you're going to, you're going to get your dollars worth. There, I'll tell you that way. That's right. There's going to be some good stuff coming. There's going to be some good stuff. Good, good and, stuff um, coming. It may or may not be legal in South Carolina, but that's another thing. Yeah. Um, we'll get, we'll get to that bridge when we, when we, when we cross it, but guys, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next week. And where we're going, we don't need roads. I hate this fucking song. I hate this song so much but I can let it go and I'm going to record it. I'm going to record it and just hope that that exercises it from my brain because I, I swear to God, my brain just won't stop taking away on this fucking song. Get, uh, get on with it. Fucking get on with it. I, I am... I am swinging from a seven-story window Throwing parties in a 10 by 7 cell It's astounding the legs I'll go To convince the whole damn world I don't need anybody's help Yeah, I am waving while I drown Don't bother swimming out here to save me I will only drag you down I'll try to use your body as a life raft Cause if there's room enough for one There must be room enough for two I'll sail the good ship you into the sunset Sipping on savory waters till my liver turns blue. <laughs> It's astounding the lengths I'll go To convince the whole damn world I don't need anybody's help